guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician. And today I just want to introduce you to my current recording template uh, for Reason 10. Um, I've been working on this for a couple of years now. I mean, obviously not since Reason 10, but um, I don't know. A while ago I made a video of my template and uh, sort of it's always a work in progress. But what I want to do is show you what my current recording template is. Um, and there's a I'm going to introduce it to you, but then there's also going to be a link down below if you want to download it. Um, please be my guest. I think you'll find it really helpful. This is um, basically just allows you to get recording very quickly to arrange a song and do all of that. Um, but I'm going to put a big caveat on this that um, in the past I've said, and I'll put a link to the video, why you want to divide the recording the mixing and the mastering phases of the process up. Um, and so this template is only for recording. And so I wouldn't use this after I was done recording a song, right? I record all of the parts that I thought should go in there and I might not get everything. I might add one or two little things in the mixing phase, but I'm trying to get everything down in the recording phase. And then I'll export everything go to bounce mixer channels basically um, and I would bounce everything out and then I'd import it into a mixing template if that makes sense. So on many ways this doesn't seem like a complicated template and it's not. It's like I've tried to do everything I can to par it down, pare it down over time so that I've got the essential things I need to start working quickly but that also there's no excess baggage or drain on the CPU. So let's take a quick tour of this. Um, the first thing I want to say is that it is completely mapped to the Nectar Panorama keyboard, uh, which is the main keyboard I use. I did a video review of it. It's super powerful. Um, probably the best keyboard for Reason. It's like more or less directly designed to work with Reason. So it's got all these um, knobs and pads and um, Everything sort of maps to Reason really quickly and easily. Um, they've got pretty good customer support. Setup isn't too bad. It plays well. All of that. Anyway, this isn't the review of that keyboard. There's a video of the review of that keyboard. If you want to find out more about that keyboard, watch that review. Um, but anyway, the point is that you have to do a few things to uh, in the Edit Preferences section, basically under Control Surfaces, to lock it to the mixer and to lock it to... Um, the device, so I've got that set up. The second thing is I've got it at 48K, which is how I record. That's just the way people, mostly I record. Um, that's the way a lot of companies want their uh, licensed music to come up, so that's how I record. I can't really hear a difference between 44 and 48, but that's what they want, so all right, that's what they get. And then I have a pretty low buffer set here for playing live. This is um, basically about as low you can go lower than this i think mine goes to like 96 maybe but um i can't really feel or hear a difference so this is sort of the balance between where i can start to feel a little bit of a lag but also have a uh, good performance um manual monitoring um everything else is i don't have the cable animations on uh because that slows things down um i've got my settings for um, the CPU, I'm, I'm still not sure about uh, hyper-threading and multi-core audio rendering. Sometimes they seem to work better and sometimes they don't, so those I will mess around with. Um, and I've got my plugins all ready to go, and I've got it in English, which is helpful to me because I don't speak in the Deutsch or any of the, well, I hablo the Espanol. So the next thing we're going to do is look at this uh, sequencer window here. So the only thing I've really got going on here is that I've um, mapped the block view to include um, different song parts. So if I wanted to write in the block view, I might, but I really don't do that too often. Instead, what I do is I'll select the draw tool here and I'll draw in a section like this and then draw in another section and another section and like if you're recording 
what you can do. This can just be really helpful while you're tracking, um, you know, to know what parts you're in, what's coming up soon, right? So, um, obviously, we should all be counting the bars and the measures in our head, but sometimes you lose count. So, with this, you can just quickly, you know, plan out what the song is supposed to be or map this to the song, and then you can quickly jump around. It also makes it easy to just click a selection and set loop to selection so you can work on one part. Um, so I've got these readily available. Um, if we go to the mixer, nothing is too crazy here because there's nothing going on. I don't want to put any effects on at this stage. Um, that isn't to say I won't use like effects that are fundamental to the sound of an instrument. For example, like I would put a guitar amp on and I'd want the guitar to sound as much like a guitar as I could. Or I might use a, you know, phaser on something because a phaser is really shaping the sound and like part of it. But I'm not going to use like saturation or compression or reverb. I might use like a delay if I'm really clearly going for a delay effect like a YouTube type, YouTube type thing. Um, but generally staying away from mixing type effects um, as opposed to more creative effects. I also have delay compensation off. Uh, that slows things down and since I'm not going to have, shouldn't have any parallel channels or any um, real advanced signal processing going on with the returns, I shouldn't need it, A, for the sound, but also I'm not going to let it slow things down. And then finally in the rack, the only thing I have here is a limiter set up between the master out and the hardware output. And this isn't there to make it loud, it's just to keep things from clipping, to keep my uh, speakers safe and my hearing safe. Um, and so that's it. This is a simple setup, um, but it works. Um, and so really, you know, I'd recommend downloading this, I'd recommend downloading all the templates that I've got. They work for me. I don't know if they're going to work for you, but start playing around with them and editing them to the point where they work for you. Also, I do have a video that shows you how to um, use these uh, templates, how to set them up. Um, so I put a link down to that below if you don't know how to set up a template um, or how to set a default template. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to subscribe and like so that you can watch more of these videos and keep growing uh, 